Hello everyone, this is Michael Merdad here. Today's conversation, life is a riot. <laughs> I hope you can uh, appreciate the humor of that. If you can't, you should go to a very serious station somewhere else on social media, okay? In any case, life is a riot. So, you know, when you look at the situation in the world, I try to not even mess with social statements and political statements and things that go on in the world because it's such a, a an insanity. But I do once in a while do so, especially when you folks request it so often um, if it becomes something really important to you. So I talked about the pandemic that came to the world and you know predicted it last year, then it came and then I talked about it a few times. So I'm gonna talk about this and, um, and we have a uh, a, couple, a couple short videos that I did, did where I uh, commented about it a little bit. So hopefully you folks will just weave this together. It's been requested that I do this as part of the Friday night, and then hopefully we won't have to discuss it again. My focus is typically self-help spirituality, so it's not overtly about politics and all that, thank God. But sometimes I can't, you know, avoid the fact that they cross over. And in this case... We know that it's crossing over because I'm going to give an energetic, spiritual version of what's going on. I'm not going to talk about right and wrong, about people and the streets and all that. Just simply, um, you know, people in this world take things very seriously. And understandably so, because it all seems so serious. But if people knew how much they're being manipulated by the game players who are out there creating havoc and the news stations that sometimes do that, the politicians that sometimes, you know, they politicize whatever they need to, whatever's convenient. That stuff is actually gross. Almost really laughable if it weren't so gross. Gross to me is not what the people are doing. Sometimes it's not about that. It's what's behind that, that there's people motivating that. That's just gross and um, not worth my time. And it's up to you to decide how much time you're gonna put into it. One person called, you know, commented that they would like me to share about this and they said, I only watched three minutes of the news and I'm totally depressed now. That's about right. Um, you only need three minutes and you'd be d depressed. But why will you watch it if you're gonna get depressed? Now the person of course would say, well, I didn't know uh, it was gonna do that at the time. So I, I, I'm not picking on them, I'm just saying, this is an energetic war going on, guys. This isn't really racial or political. It just, it's made to be those things. This is a good and evil in a way in this world. And in a nutshell, the hurt in mankind, racial, genetic, you know, continental, religious, all the different breakdowns you have of people, male, female, you know, gender, even age variations, they, they, all these different things they carry and we carry, we're carriers, you think of, of viruses, we're carriers of virus. No, we're carriers also of, of memory, of hurt. And, and that stuff sits in our being as a frequency. And at, there's basically, we live in a symbiotic relationship with the earth and everything even inanimate objects, seemingly inanimate, like even a rock, everything, object, being, and so on, has an energetic force field around it. Now, if you're into spirituality and healing, you call it the human aura, but there's a force field science even knows about. It's a simple force field that kind of, it's, it's, it seems like a force field that holds matter together, but in a way, it's not enveloping holding it together. That's the way science and such sees it. Like some people think you have an aura that wraps around you. It doesn't, it emanates from you. It's beams of light. Aura is not like just floating around you. The aura is tiny, tiny, you know, beyond microscopic um, beams of light, just countless numbers just shining out. So light isn't, like a light bulb doesn't have light wrapped around a glass bulb. Think about that. It emanates from inside. You, like the filament of a light, have a soul. And it's like the filament and it illuminates. 
And it, the body, the shell of the glass of a light bulb is your body. So inside is the soul, the shell is the body of the, you know, the light bulb, the shell. And then that's like your body and then out comes light and warmth, which is what you and I emanate. However, hurts, betrayals, this and that, and racial memory and so on and so on and so on. It becomes this sludgy like energy. And because we're in a symbiotic relationship with the earth, we have a light force field, so does the earth. But we have hurts and so does the earth. Locations like Gettysburg, they have this collective memory of darkness. But there's also racial memory, continental memory, national memory, karma, city karma, town karma. There's like a, an energetic memory. And it could be positive, of course. But there's darkness in a lot of places. And that darkness doesn't just sit on the earth like as you might think. It's in the body of you and me. It's in the body of the earth. And because we're in that symbiotic relationship with the earth, the earth connects with our darkness. Our darkness connects with their its, like, the, again, the national memory and so on, karma. And then we beam that out, and it gets absorbed into the earth's version of its etheric field or aura or force field. And then once that darkens enough, like a cloud, it becomes, it's sort of, rains back on us. Now, the good news is it's it, we can learn from it. We can go, wow, I see this. I can feel it. If you had clairvoyance running the world, they could see it, feel it. And like in days of old, where we're even great, you know, strong nations, they or used oracles still, right? Greek and Roman, they still used oracles. Celtic, you know, peoples of the British Isles, they, they still used oracles. And we don't have that anymore. And when, uh, when the presidents used oracles, like Reagan used to have an astrologer, and people find out about it, they shame them because that's that sick part of the world that doesn't want spirituality to exist because that's their way of edging God out, E-G-O, ego. So this sort of then rains back on us karmically, energetically, if we had more oracles in the, you know, in the world used properly, they would be able to forewarn. That's why I last year forewarned what was coming with a pandemic and all that. So you can see and feel these things if you tune in. And so most people aren't able to see that there's this energetic cloud that's like a, 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 like a wet blanket, like mummifying you, wrapping around a person, but it's doing it nationally. So, so you have these people in the street. And let's do these, you know, you know, peaceful rallies and a look, we, here's what we believe. Here's what we feel. That's okay to say. But there's this darkness that goes, there they are. The gathering, you know, people. The gathering masses of potential hosts of darkness. And so those who are already kind of on the verge of ego, little game playing, those who are already on the verge of wanting to take something to violence or you know, damage and, and uh, um, vandalism and so forth. You know, that's, this field is attracted to them. So it rains an energy that you can see, if you could see it clairvoyantly, you can see it raining upon those individuals and they start stirring like a fervor. And it's no different than Hitler. This is so ironic because what's happening now is what Hitler did. He and his be friends got people riled up about hate, the victims that they were. The, oh, we're victims, victims, victims. They started World War I. They lost and they were upset in, you know, prior to World War II because they were having such poverty and devastation in Germany, which is really a drag and it's gross. I don't like to see people suffering like that. But national karma, they did cause this upon themselves from starting the First World War. But they lost, and so they got the spoils of war, you could say, I guess, in, in a certain way back on them. And um, so, you know, he's actually uh, bitching and moaning about it. Hitler, you know, gets people riled up. Now, nah, what does he start doing? We're the victims. We're the victims. Negative, negative. And people are starting to get, yes, that's right. Now we're being heard. Then he turns it one more step. Who are the victimizers? Hmm, the Jews. Let's go get them. So you have these crazies today doing the same thing to you to people in the world. They're start, starting the victim fervor, then they turn it, let's get violent. Find the victimizers. 
people with stores, you know, that actually have jobs and lives and whatever, instead of these people that want to just prey upon all of this. I'm so proud of men and women, black and white and every other color race, that are calling this for what it is. It's a lie. I'm so proud of uh, even the, the family members of the gentleman that was, you know, killed recently that kind of stirred all this up. God, I mean, I'm, I'm serious. I, I mean, I'm so, you know, in almost in a sense of awe and gratitude that instead of adding to the problem, they're not only saying, no, 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 no. This is not what my brother, my, you know, uncle, my, would, would have wanted. You guys, this isn't about him and it's not about race, these people are saying. This, don't act like this is about, don't act like you're supporting our race because many of us here are not at all agreeing with violence. We have something to say, yes. So hear us, but we're not doing, you guys are doing this and you're sick. And I love that they're so honest about it because they could easily play into this and it would increase the whole fervor. Amazing. They're like mystics. That's just an aside I wanted to add. God bless you, those of you who are saying, don't you dare include us with your psychopathic behaviors. I think that's just, God, just amazing. And, you know, you may not agree with what I'm saying, and you might. I hope you do. Um, <clears throat> but I'm not on a soapbox per se. I'm not asking you to go and do something different out there. Uh, my job as a light worker is simply to say, guys, go here. Peace, love, find it in your heart somewhere. And instead of allowing just this darkness to rain upon people and then stir them, because that's, that's an evil. If you want to say that there's an evil, that's a manifestation of evil. It knows what it's doing. That's an antichrist-like energy to get people turned and making them hate each other and attack each other. And, uh, and by the way, this is, this, this is going to be something that's going to recur more often. It has been recurring more often the last several years, and it's going to keep going exponentially so. Um, I've told folks, get, don't live in cities like the big cities anymore. I've said that for, ye for years, and it's proving more and more to be righteous. I've also told people, be careful about living on coasts. And yet, so many coastal cities are currently um, um, involved with this, this stuff. Um, but coastal, obviously, not to do with uh, riots and stuff. So coast also because there'll be, you know, there'll be a rise someday in the, in the uh, uh, sea levels, but that's another conversation, sort of. It's partly related, partly not. Um, so be very careful and, and please, you know, love, healing, forgiveness. Don't pretend there aren't riots, but don't get involved in causing more harm and vandalism. Vandalism, the word comes from the vandals, and the vandals are the, some of the races that felt they were lesser than, they were kind of economically lower class, lower level, and they got ticked off at Rome because Rome uh, abused them. It really did. It abused them, sickly abused them. And they finally said, we've had enough. So they're part of the nations that came in later and sacked Rome, the vandals. And they vandalized, the vandals vandalized Rome and sacked Rome, took its riches well, that's kind of what's happening now. Some people are sincere when they're saying something's wrong. America is sometimes being Rome. And it's supposed to be the spiritual elder brother to other nations. It really is. But it hasn't matured to the place yet to deserve that spot because it's still attracted to being Rome. It's still attracted to being wealthy and a greedy and hurtful. Now, I don't agree, you know, with all of everybody's opinions about pros or cons about um, this or this country or any other. Uh, I do see a great energy, karma, that's potential, potential for America. But I also do see some karma there. And how's it gonna change? Oh yeah, more hatred. That's not what's gonna change. Um, we need to raise people, children, to understand life differently so that when they become the leaders of the nations, they're going to see it all differently and have different goals instead of just greedy goals. That's my take, and I won't say anything more about that. 
But I will say, please, take a moment, do your best. If people say to you, like some of the emails I receive, oh, my friends are mad at me and things are going crazy in my life because I won't get involved and I won't get involved with the hatred and support the hatred. Guys, there's nothing wrong with you. They're crazy and you're choosing to not be crazy. If they start to overly shame you for not wanting to be crazy, crazy meaning acting out and out of your mind. If they try to shame you too far, walk away. And if you say, oh, I can't, then you're telling me you're addicted to a form of insanity. If that's what you wanna do, then don't ask me my opinion. Stay addicted to the form of insanity. But I totally give you the permission, I totally support you, and I totally encourage you to break free of all forms of sickness, if you can. Whenever you can, however you can, as soon as you can. And I don't mean that because you're good and they're bad. One reason I would say break away is because it's a healthy boundary for your sanity's sake, but it's also meant out of love. Because when you break away and you leave them with a statement of, what you're doing is dark and I can't support it. With all due love and respect, you know, go your way. I don't hate you. And if ever you want to reconnect with me in a loving relationship, I'm here. But what you're doing, I, I see through. Let them know you see through it. Don't have them respond. Block their number. You don't want to get into banter back and forth. How dare you say that what I'm doing is wrong? Don't get into that. Goodbye, block. So that they can have time to think about that. They're going to either go into denial. Fine, I don't care that you did that, which they do care. and uh, Or they're going to do, how dare you, I, I hate you. That's their problem. They're going to go through their reactions because you're putting boundaries like on a child who's out of control and you're saying no. So they are going to react a bit and you should be ready for that. If you're not ready for it, then don't be setting boundaries on any topic. If you're not ready for the backlash that comes from the ego when you say no to it or evil when you say no to it. You cast a demon out of a person. You don't try to make friends with it. You're saying, no, this isn't okay. And if it's wondering where it's going to go and gosh, you've, you've ruined my life as a demon because now I don't have a place to go, you say, oh no, I'm sorry you took it that way. I didn't mean that at all. No, no, I have lots of places. It's called heaven. Many mansions, heaven. Would you like to go? Because I'll help you get there. Do you think it wants to go there? No, nor do your friends. Most of your friends that want to be hateful, they want to be hateful. Haters will hate. So many blessings to you guys. Thanks for, for letting me share this. And we'll try to create a link for the other uh, conversations I've done on this, mainly because in one talk I did, I went further into the, uh, the whole energetic thing of what's going on, kind of the, the auric and the energetic version of it, okay? So I just wanted to do at least a synopsis of that in this presentation. And this is our first, um, first June Friday presentation. And, you know, in this one, we're announcing also that we're changing over to a shorter presentation now. So um, bless you all. Thank you for listening. Remember, you can join us on uh, at Sunday services that I do from live, you know, live from uh, our Unity Center. And um, you can watch these Friday night presentations. Most everything I offer is free. Um, we do have some books and CDs that I've done over the years that, that are wonderful, you know, you might enjoy. Um, and or if you just like to make donations now and then, we greatly appreciate it. it supports the ministry and um, the vision of uh, creating a nice place called Edenshire one day to where we could have a nice heaven on earth experience to the best we can create so that people and, and even animals, critters, have an alternative uh, place to live than some of the insanity places that humans create. All right. So God bless all of you and thank you for your time. Bye bye.